Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Converted is a great thing. I wish I could explain it better than I'm going to. But converted is really, is really about change, right? It's about change. It is, we say it a lot. We say it like, I was blind, amazing grace. I cry every time I sing this song. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Well, I once was lost, but now I'm found. <laughs> well, I was blind, but now I see. Let me see, just add a couple words. I was deaf, but now I hear. Come on. My heart was hard, but now it's soft. I was ugly, but now I'm pretty. Okay. <laughs> I was mean, but now I'm nice. I was a hater, but now I'm a lover. Because of the gift I have received. Ah. Uh, Amazing grace. Come on, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Conversion is being one thing and doing another. Conversion is being who God gave, who he made you to be and living it out as a witness. That's what conversion really is. See, I told you I wasn't going to do a very good job of explaining that, but can I say it a different way? It's, it's having confidence in the spirit of the living God who is alive inside of you. Amen? I am the vessel. I'm just a container of this great power. Or having, having confidence in your own self, in your own mind, in your own wisdom, in your own way, in your old way. Amen? Jesus, the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's my way, he's my truth, and he's my life. I say that because it makes it personal, amen? It's not, I don't, I don't have to go to the Bible, I don't have to go to Pastor Everett so he can explain a scripture verse to me so that I can have truth. I can open the Bible myself, and I can read the word of God myself every day, and I can begin to experience truth in my life. I can begin to experience a new way for me. I can begin to experience, you know what I think is really powerful? Whoever is in your life would begin to experience something brand new if you would just start living like you're supposed to be living. Amen? And stop thinking that everything out there is more powerful than what's inside of you because what's inside of you is the world cannot contain what's in you. Amen? But God chose you. You know how I know that? Because you're listening to me right now. He chose you. You are chosen and called and brought here, brought to this moment for a, a change. Amen? Okay, Luke 22, 31, 32. And the Lord said unto, unto Simon, he said, then the Lord, and Jesus said, Simon, Simon, once for heaven, once for earth, verily, verily, amen, amen, amen in heaven, amen in earth. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, amen? And there's the, there's the colon. And Jesus said, I have prayed for you, who would love to have Jesus pray for you? Who would love that? Who would love to have, just to, just to know, would you like to be, put yourself in Peter's place. Wouldn't you like to be Peter? No, I, he's already dead. But <laughs> he's in heaven. He gave his life for the Lord. Amen? Even though he denied him. Even though he, you know, uh, was rambunctious and all of those things. But on the day of Pentecost, guess what he, he did? He stood up and he became the, he became the prototype for all preachers. I, I really believe if you want to be a good preacher, go look at Peter's life. That's who you should be like. You should be just like him. Because Peter, Peter was, was, was bold. Peter was rambunctious. Peter was, uh, he, was uh, he wasn't afraid of the crowd. He wasn't afraid of what people were going to say. He didn't care because he didn't think long enough. <laughs> that's, why, that's why Jesus went and said, follow me. Peter was like, he was, he was a fisherman. He wasn't a scholar. He wasn't that smart. That's really what it was. He just knew what God's voice sounded like, and he was looking for something to do. <laughs> Come on. 
He was looking for something to do. So God said, I'll choose you. And he said, follow me. He, he was looking for somebody to be looking. Amen? And so how many here, how many here can say, you know what? I think I, I, I meet that qualification. I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking for, for God to be looking. Amen? And that, that's all you got to do. You just got to be willing to go looking. Amen? You got to be willing to go after him. You got to be willing to, to experience something great. And then you go ahead and say what he tells you to say. See, that's why, that's why I know Peter was a prototype of all preachers, because Peter wasn't afraid to say stuff, okay? He, 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 you, remember, you remember the day that he said, he said to Jesus, you know, the Son of God, Son of the living God, we know you're the Son of the living God. He said, get behind me. You know, he said, he said don't go there. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, to him, right? So he was a flip-flopper, but he said what he, whatever, he, whatever he had in us. So if God put something in us, we shouldn't be afraid to say it. That's a great example of prayer. Jesus prayed for Peter. Jesus, this is how I, this is a great example for prayer. So, so if the Holy Spirit is in you, if, 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 if Jesus did come to earth and did die and did rise on the third day and, and he did ascend some 40 days later to heaven on the elevator to, to heaven, right? The, the, zoop, the, 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 I don't know how fast, how many floors he went up in on me, because some of them go fast, some go slow, but there was a cloud, some cloud that took Jesus up out of their sight, and he was just standing on a cloud, and zoop, went up into heaven, and he, and he, and he came back in Acts chapter 2 in the form of the Holy Spirit. That, that means that there is Jesus in us, and Jesus in us should call you to a place of prayer for others. Amen? So Jesus was praying for Peter like we should be praying for others. Amen? That's a sign of conversion. How many times do we come to God and pray about everything that we need and forget to go and look at the board in the back of the church that says, so-and-so, sister, so-and-so, or brother, so-and-so, uh, whatever, somebody else has got some other need that's a little bit g bigger than yours. Amen? Maybe, just maybe, God's waiting for you to take your eyes off of your own life, your own circumstance, and begin to look at someone else so that he can flow a blessing into your life that you won't be able to contain. Amen? So that you can continue to be a witness. Come on, because you can be, get, continue to give him glory. So that you can continue. See, 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 this room, okay, is like 60 by 40 or whatever it is. This room is too small for what God is doing in the earth. It's too small. There's not enough room in this room. But he, he's not going to give us a bigger room if we won't give him more space in our life. Amen? If, I won't, if, if, if we won't let him grow in us, why would he give us something bigger to do when we can't even handle what we have? It's like I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, you know, thinking about all the troubles that are in my life. The other day I was, I was sitting in my office and, and uh, there was trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble. And I, I was thinking to myself, I just want to take a nap. That's what I was thinking. I want to take a nap. I'm just tired, you know. And here come another trouble. Here come another, you know, troubles all have faces and names and personalities. Did you know that? And, and I noticed that, that a, lot of people, a lot of people's trouble is, is about a, a, maybe a dollar bill or a money. But, but, you know, money doesn't have personality. It has a job to do. It's, job. it's just a job. It, it, the money don't have personality. We have personality. We have hopes. We have dreams. I got a dollar. I hope it'll give me enough. I, ho I have a dream that I have more of them. But see, that, that, it just has, it don't have personality. We have personality. But I don't need more troubles. I got enough troubles already. Amen? I need, I need, I need to rely more on God. Let Him expand my leadership ability. Amen? Let him, let him come and fill me up more. Let, 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 let him grow me so that I can have more ability. You know, Moses had, had the ability to lead all the children of Israel. And one day he was complaining, God, oh, I don't know why you gave me this people. Why don't you, why'd you just kill me? He said. And God said, you know, bring 70 people over. And, and he didn't give more, more power to them. The other 70, he took from what he had given Moses and gave it to them. See, that's what leadership looks like. It looks like giving away what we have, what God already gave you. This room is too small. You know how I know that? Because I have a glimpse of what God wants to do. Amen? 
Just because you don't see it right now in this moment doesn't mean you shouldn't come alongside and believe with me. Amen? Because if we believe together, guess what? If two or three would agree as touching anything on this earth, guess what we'll have? What we say. See, the church needs to come to a place where we begin to believe more, where we begin to receive more, where we begin to do more and trust more and walk more and, and be more of God in the earth. Okay. See, conversion is a, a really a struggle between the old and the new. I am a new creature created in Christ Jesus unto good works. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. That means the world ain't never seen nothing like you. Amen? The world ain't never seen nothing like, like any of us, like me. And, and so we have this struggle that goes on inside of us between old and new. And we, we need to really, I, just, I think we should just declare, let the new arise. Let it arise in your life. Let it arise. Amen? You know, hungry or full, there's no way for you to know the difference unless you've experienced it. Empty or fulfilled. Without the infilling, there's no reference. Hmm? To, for, to take a journey to greater, we, we must have a sense of the insufficient. It, it's, it's, it's never our task to consider our lack or our insufficient understanding. It's, it is our task to display, to display, to demonstrate with contentment what God has done in us. My security is in, in Christ. It's the contradiction that stings us the most, though. It's, it's that contradiction that we have inside of us. It's, it's I know who I am. I, I prayed that this morning. I said, Father, I know who I am, but I know who you are. And I know that you're greater than any insufficient part of my own life, my own mind, my own vision, my own, my own, my own aspirations. That, it's, it's that contradiction. I think, I think that's, that's part of, of growing in God. It's, it's part, of, part of conversion is, is to feel the rub of contradiction in your life, to, to know that it's there, but to trust Him anyways. Amen? To trust Him anyways. I am learning to depend, right? You know, I think, I think what, one, of the, one of the hardest things for a Christian, us, us people that have been saved a long time, us that have walked with God, us that have been through, through all kinds of stuff, okay? It's, it's, we, we know the right lingo. We know what to say. We, we know the verse and the chapter. But, but it, it's, it's not okay just to know the lingo if you don't trust the validity of it, if you don't, if you don't live it out, if you, don't, if you don't really display that. Like, I've been set free from my old life. Really? I, I, I've been transformed. Okay. Be a witness of that. I'm learning to depend upon the dependable God to meet my needs. Amen? Let, let me just tie a bow. I'm, I'm, I'm really done. I'm, really, I'm all done, almost. The source of power is already here. been here all along. I, I don't need any more power. I don't, I don't, I don't need more power because whenever you receive a gift, think about this, whenever we receive a gift, you know one time someone gave me a, uh, it was a gift that changed my life and, and I remember when I received the gift it was given in humility uh, to me and I remember when it was given I, 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 I looked at the gift and I realized that the gift I received was not bigger than the one that gave it. And so I didn't worship the gift. I worshiped the one who gave the gift. Amen? And, and, and it, was, it was a person, okay? But, and, and I don't worship him like it under my knees and all that. I just said, thank you, okay? Because it was a gift. And so if we understand that naturally, 
how much more is that powerful spiritually, okay? Because I am not going to worship the gift that I am. I'm going to worship the gift that he is. Amen? I, I can keep a rhythm. I know it's kind of crazy to think, so I can keep a rhythm. But maybe you can sing a song. <laughs> Amen? I know that was bad, wasn't it? Okay, maybe you can play an instrument. Maybe you can say something. Maybe you can pray. Maybe you can organize. Maybe, maybe whatever your gift is, 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 is not less than me or more than me. I am, I'm not, I, the church isn't full of what, it, what some old preacher said. He said, church is not full of big eyes and little U's. Okay? It's full of people who all have gifts. Amen? From the same spirit. Amen? So if whatever, I, 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 this gets me excited. I'm going to try not to get excited. I'm going to just keep talking. Malatone, okay? Real, real calm, okay? But whatever God is doing, I want you to look around. Look around the room right now. And ask yourself, why did God pick all of these people to change the world? See? And most of you are right now going, <laughs> no way God picked that one. Oh. And the other person over there is looking at you going, there ain't no way. <laughs> like, you guys are a bunch of weirdos. But you know what? God knows what he's doing. And I want to challenge you right now. I want to challenge you to take the next step. Okay? I want to challenge you to take the next step and say, you know what, God? I believe that. I, I really do. I believe that. I believe that God is, God, is, God is way smarter than Pastor Everett. He's way smarter than COVID-19. He's, he's way, way smarter than the governor of the state of Illinois. He's way, way smarter than the president of the United States. He's way smarter than all my past problems and situations. He's way smarter than whatever it is I've got going on in my, in my own life that I don't understand and I can't ever figure out. He's way bigger than all of those things. And I'm just going to trust him with every single thing that's going on, even this. I used to get up. I used to get up in the morning. I'm gonna be honest with you. I get up. I get up on Sunday morning, and I'd come here, and I would. I would. I would get this disappointed because there'd be like a lot of empty chairs. And then COVID happened, and we didn't have anybody in the chairs. Really, we just had a camera, and I. I was like. I was like, learning how to preach to nobody was like not a problem for me because I used to preach in my basement to a wall, to a concrete wall. I talked to the wall, and the wall never laughed. The, the wall never gave me any energy. It didn't give me no love. And you know what? Empty chairs don't give me any love either. But you know what? It's not about empty chairs, concrete walls, or anything. It's about, it's about doing what he called us to do, all of us. And, and, if, and if God called you to it, my dad said this to me. He said, he said this, and it really has stuck with me. He said, if you're big enough to speak to the few, you're small enough to speak to the many. You notice that's backwards, right? That's a backwards philosophy because we think, well, I got to have a lot of people, then, pe then I get recognized. But you know what? It's not about me getting recognized. It's about, it's about having an answer. It's about, about having truth. It's about walking in as a witness. Amen? And, and so people or no people, God is still God. People or no people, there is still power inside of me, amen, to change the world. There is something inside of me because I'm going to tell you this right now. We think that the world is going to hell. You know what? They are. But my Bible says, in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world. Amen? That whosoever, there's no restrictions on whosoever. I love that being a lawyer, right? Whosoever means anybody. That means you and I. That means we are very specifically picked for a very specific job. Amen? One more verse and I'll be done, right? Matthew 13, verses 9 
and verses 13. Verses 9 and 13. Notice I skipped a few verses. Matthew 13, verses 9 and 13. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's verse 9. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 13. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not because and hearing they hear not neither do they understand jesus talks in parables because they ain't got no sight they ain't got no hearing and they ain't got no understanding god god is speaking to people come on who don't listen Come on, they don't, they can't hear because so they can't, they don't listen. They, they got a heart that's after other things. You know, there's a lot of gods in the world, little g gods. There's only one big g god, only one. I stand as a representative of the only one who is alive and well today, amen? All other gods are dead or just pieces of wood or, or graven images or or gold or silver or cars or people or buildings or, or all of those things. So, I serve the living God. Amen? I have a relationship with Him. No sight, no hearing, no understanding. Revelation 22, verse 17 said, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. <laughs> and let him that heareth say, Come. <laughs> and let him that is a thirst, Come. Come on, come on. That, that means the door is wide open to all of us. Amen? Will you take the gift? Will you take the gift today? Will you receive it? Amen? I have already received it. But you've not done anything with it. Stand with me. I'm done. Really, I'm done. Actually, I could keep going, but I'm, I'm really done. Okay, one more verse. You can take it, right? One more verse. Take the gift. Here it is. Here's the verse. I, I lost the verse. I found it again. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Be ye followers of God as dear children. Children of says in another place that unless you be converted, notice that word converted, we talked about that word converted, and become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's what I want to do. I want to pray with us as we, as we close. I just want to pray with you. If you would stand wherever you are, if you're in your room right now, at home, wherever you are, I, I, want, you to, I want you to just stand. And I want, I want to pray a simple prayer with you. I just want to believe God for something brand new in my life. Amen? I want to, I want, I want to believe God for something brand new in your life. Amen? I want, to, I want to see God do a new thing. Amen? Today. And so we just want to, we want to ask him, Father, as children, Father, do you ever notice when you pray, you always get into these little habits of saying Father or Dear Heavenly Father, or, or you ever notice that? I, I want to challenge you to change that a little bit, okay? And just say, say Daddy. Daddy, I ask you to come and touch me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I ask you to come into my heart, fresh and new. I ask you to touch my mind. And Lord, don't erase everything I know, but help me to change my perspective on all that I know so that I know that I'm just a witness of your great power, Lord, that is going to come into my life. And I thank you right now, Father, for a brand new experience with you today, Lord. I thank you that today joy is being restored to my life. I thank you that I will smile when I get done praying this prayer because I know that I know that I know that I have been forgiven. I have been set free. And Lord, I know that you have a purpose for my life. And so, Father, I thank you right now that you are my dad that I don't have to pay any bills. <laughs> and I, I, can just, I can just trust that you got my, my future in, in mind and that you, you've seen all that has happened in my past, but you brought me to this day and I'm still breathing, Lord. 
And I thank you, Lord, that because I have breath in my body, I will choose to give you praise and glory and honor right now in this moment. And I thank you, Lord, that you have come and set me free, that you have forgiven me, that you have transformed my life, that you have touched my mind, that you have made everything new. And I thank you, Lord, that I am a new creature this day. And I will do my part, Father, and be a witness of your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. One more thing. You think I'm done. <laughs> I really am done, but I'm not really done. I feel this, uh, this something, I don't know. Usually if we, were, if we, we had a bunch of people, I would, I, would, I would get the oil out and I would say, look, I want to touch you with some oil and stuff, but I just want to ask you to do this. I want to I ask you, are you willing to let the Holy Spirit come into your life? Are you willing to be a vessel? Will you open up yourself this, in this moment right now? Because we think uh, getting filled with the Holy Spirit is something like crazy thing, like you gotta have all the music just right and all, uh, all this, uh, gotta, uh, right, right? It's not about emotion or anything else. It's about faith, amen? The church came together in, in Acts chapter two and you know what they were? They were just in one accord. That's all they were. There was unity in the house. Amen. And so I want to ask you right now, do you want the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you want to hear him speak to you like never before? Do you want to see him use you like never before? And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if you're at home and maybe you don't have any Crisco oil or, or something, but I, 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 you can even hit pause if you have to, because I'm just going to keep on going but you might want to hit pause if you have to go get some Crisco oil or something. And you, you, if you don't have any oil in the house, just take a little water from your water bottle, okay? And just, just you know, I heard of holy water before, and just dip that and just put it on your forehead like this, okay? And, 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 and then let's just pray together. Let's agree together right now, okay? For a, a infilling, right? For, for a gift to come from heaven. But like salvation is a gift, but I want power to come. He said, I shall receive power. I, I can have it, amen? This is something I can have. This is something I can have. Say it, say it to yourself. It's something I can have, amen? It's a gift that God wants to give me, amen? And it's the power to be a witness, amen? That's all it is, the power to be a witness, amen? Amen, so let's just pray together right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I stand in my office as pastor of Breakthrough Church I stand here as a witness of your power and majesty and of your glory and of your awesome power, Father. And Father, I ask right now for everybody under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would come and fill them now. Fill them now, Lord, with your spirit, Lord, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Fill the container, Lord. Let it overflow, God. Let it come now, Lord Jesus, into their life. And Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are demonstrating right now all over the world, all over this, all over in this room, all over in every house, Lord, every, every car, every place, wherever they, the, the, this, my voice is going right now. Father, I know that you're doing a thing right now. And Father, as a witness, God, I declare to, you, I declare to the world into the camera right now. I step out of, over what's comfortable to me, Lord. And I'm saying, Father, let it be. Let it so be. So be it upon the earth right now. And come and fill, fill vessels right now. In Jesus' name, fill vessels right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that we can be witnesses, Lord. And I thank you right now. I thank you, Lord, right now. Just say, just say it with me. I thank you right now. Put your hand up and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for, for your power. Thank you for your, your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gift. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you're changing everything right now. All over the world, Lord, all over the world, all over this, in this room, all over every life, Lord, every, every person that hears me right now, Lord, you're changing everything around. And Father, I know that we are set free. And it, it says in John verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 36, it says, Whom he who the Son has set free is free indeed. So Lord, I declare right now new things will begin to flow out of our life. New, 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 new words will come out of our mouth. Lord, new, new hopes and dreams will come alive. Lord, new relationships are being formed right now. Father, there's a new, there's a new marriage. Lord, there's a heart coming back together. Lord, there's a, there's a body that's getting healed right now. There's, there's things that are, that are going on all over the place, Lord. And we're, we're going to rise up as an army, Lord, with one mind, one accord. Lord, for one purpose, which is to save souls, Lord. So, to save them from the pit of hell. 
It's about them. Help us to go to them, Lord. Help us to go to them, Lord. Help us to go and do what you called us to do all along, Father. We turn our eyes from the things of the earth and we look forward. We look full in the glorious face of the Savior who has saved us. And we say, come and change it, Lord. Come and turn it around, Lord. Come and raise us up, Lord. And we just thank you right now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. I know that God has done a new thing. Amen. I know it. I feel it in my heart right now. I feel it in my spirit right now. I can feel it going out through the camera waves. I feel it going out all around the world and touching people right now. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. And I know that God is doing something, so don't just run away, okay? If you're online somewhere, go to mybreakthrough.online. That's our website. We want to connect with you. We want you to become part of this great family of God. We want you to, to know that you're not alone, amen? We want to be with you. I don't, I don't care for miles, many, many miles. You know, there's a little girl in India. She calls me dad. But she's part of the family. And I was praying for her the other day. I said, God, I can't, I can't be, in it, be over there right now. I can't protect her. I can't do anything for her except pray. I can't, I can't keep a snake from coming. I can't keep a, a, a bad person from coming. I can't keep anything. But I know that your God are, are able to touch her life right now. And I said, I charge angels to watch over my child in another country the one you gave to me. And I thank you, God, for the gift that she is. My heart got bigger. That's the heart of God. It gets bigger, one at a time. Bigger. It gets bigger. That's the new birth. It shows up in our heart. How that we, we begin to see another person and another soul and another, another project it's about getting bigger. It's about growing in God. Amen? Growing in grace. Grace means love. Growing in love to one another. The Bible says that's how the world will know that, we, that there really is a God. When we love one another. So don't run away and think you're not connected. You are connected to us. God brought us together. Okay? I know I'm talking a long time, but that's because COVID. Okay, I could talk a long time because COVID. I, I think every, every preacher right now talks a long time because of COVID because like there's nobody there, so they just keep talking. And so, and you guys that are in the room, they're like, they're like, it's okay, pastor, we got your back. Keep talking, keep talking. I got nothing else better to do. I'm just getting hungry. Like I want a cheeseburger, some tacos or something, maybe some chicken, but, but I can get that in a minute. We're so busy running around doing what? Going places for what? Amen. So I'm going to let you go if you're online. See you later. And uh, we'll see you soon, okay? God bless you guys. We love you guys.